Hello, everybody. This is Coach Aaron Saft in the Running is Life podcast. And today I have one of my athletes, Chaz Adams, who just completed the World's End 100K up in Pennsylvania. Um, he is doing the Triple Crown of Pennsylvania, which consists of the Heiner 50K, which he had already completed, the World's End 100K, which we talk a lot about, and the Eastern States 100, which is in August. Um, and then he heard about the blacklist, which includes the Black Forest 100K in October. So we're going to talk all about um, World's End 100K. Chaz's training, uh, he came to me as a new athlete in um, December, I believe we started. And um, his goal was to complete this Triple Crown. And the World's End is his nemesis, as you'll hear. Uh, so um, we talk about his journey, his training, his racing. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Chaz. And at the end, I'll catch up with you on everything that's going on in the world of running his life. Chaz is ready to go. <laughs> Always. He, he almost started answering my questions before I hit record. So <laughs> it's awesome to see you, my friend. And, Thanks, man. Uh, so let's just start with a congratulations on finishing World's End with the two-hour PR. That's fantastic. Mm. Um, <laughs> before we, we get into all of that, though, let's start with... Um, with who is Chaz? What is Chaz? What makes Chaz Chaz? <laughs> oh man, there's that's a lot to unpack there, man. I don't know. Uh, well, first, thanks for thanks for having me on, man. This is Absolutely. awesome. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so, Chaz, I've been. Uh, I'll, I'll make a very long story pretty short, man. I've been a fireman for about 22 years, and uh, I just started running back in 2016, and that all came about because my best friend uh, started running. And like everybody else in the world, uh, he started running all these ultras. And I was like, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the first time he ran 100, he, he did the Mohican 100. And, you know, another fireman and I went up there and had no idea what was happening. Like, what is this? And then the <laughs> next year, in uh, 2015, Ronnie got into Leadville. And I went and crewed him at Leadville. I had no idea what we were doing. I bought a bag at a family dollar. It's a Star Wars bag that we still take to every one of our races, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. Um, and after that race, we were hiking the next day and I could barely make it up a mountain. He just ran a hundred miles and my heartbeat was 250. And he was like, it's <laughs> like, dude, get me off this mountain. Uh, long story short, he signed me up for my first 25 K uh, that following April. Uh, the night before I got suckered into running the 50 K <laughs> and uh the rest is history man i've been doing this since then so uh yeah a lot going on man and, and this this running has turned into a you know like we all it's it's more than a hobby it's it's uh it's a passion um as a fireman i i got promoted unfortunately off of a truck and if any fireman listen to understand that i'm now a chief so you kind of uh, try to find something to to fill the excitement uh <laughs> instead of just driving around a car and talking on the radio so ultra running kind of just uh speaks to all of us that uh, are kind of adrenaline junkies and just looking to challenge ourselves and, and have a good time doing it. So I'm sure we could go back on, on ultra sign up and find that first 50 K, but oh, why don't you give us a moment and tell us what, what was that like? And which one was it? <laughs> oh man. So the first 50 K I did is a race that is obviously incredibly special to me. And, and a lot of people here in Ohio, it's called forget the PR 50 K and it's at Mohican state park. And uh, it's about just shy of 5,000 feet of gain. And Mohican's a beautiful place in Ohio. It's, you know, people are like, where do you run in Ohio? Well, Mohican is, it's incredible. Obviously, it's where they hold the Mohican 100. Um, so going into that race, um, you know, during that training for that race, I quit smoking. I quit using tobacco, like all the things, man. I was a, all the things a lot of us were before we got into this, right? And uh, showed up for the 25K, scared, terrified, and, you know, sitting around the campfire the night before with a few beers, Got talked into run because the guy didn't show up and said, "Hey, you should grab uh, Brock Meyer's bib and do the 50k." I'm like you're nuts. <laughs> Another beer in you. And guys are like, "Come on, man, it'd be epic." This and that. And <laughs> next thing you know, I'm running as Jason Brock Meyer and forget the PR 50k. And uh, <laughs> skip to the end of that. Uh, I learned a lot about tailwind and that you have to have more than just Coca Cola and water when you're running a 50k. Um, <laughs> that took me eight hours and. 20 minutes, I think, is what that 50K did. I couldn't walk for a week. Uh, <laughs> and literally after that week, I signed up for my first real 50K that I trained for. And that was uh, called Conquer the Castle. And it's in Northern Ohio. And that was in November. And I ended up doing that 50K in about six hours and 
40 minutes. So right. started to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But man, that first 50 K it was the classic. Everybody's told the tale. Like this is the dumbest thing in the world. Which when's the next one. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so now, you know, I, I want to speak so highly. I forget the PR is uh, I've ran it. Uh, this would be my, this would be my eighth year minus COVID. And now I captain an aid station there at the covered bridge. And it truly is like the, the Ohio homecoming uh, with some of my best friends in the world now are people that I met through that. It's called the Possum Group. Uh, that's like our running group here in, in Central Ohio. And uh, man, that, that race is just special. So uh, I, I shout out to that race. Uh, if you guys can come out to Ohio in April, it's a highly recommended race. I know a couple of the other people on our team, the Whistlers have been out here to do mm -hmm. it. And uh, it's just a great race, man. Yeah. So suckered me right into this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um how did training evolve uh, between that first 50K and the second one? What 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 kind of resources did you use to, to train? Somebody handed me the famous book, right? Relentless <laughs> Forward Progress, right? And that at the time was the Bible. Um, uh, my friend that, that Ron, shout out to big Ron here, who took me to Leadville. Um, it was just pretty much figured out. I swear. I mean, that's really what it was, man. It's not even exaggeration. It was... Uh, Time on feet, right? That's all we ever talked about. Yep. Just get time on feet, man. Time on feet. And uh, didn't really start figuring out nutrition until after my first real 50K. Um, and then as I ran that Conquer the Castle for real, I guess I will say, mm -hmm. um, then your eyes open up to what's what else is out there. And I had made a decision that day, I'm going to run 100 miles before I'm 40. And at the time, I was uh, I was 38. Okay. So, uh, so then as you, you know, you get more serious with the 50 K and then my next, I was like, I did the typical, like, why do you do a 50 miler? So <laughs> I did the, uh, back half of burning river 50 miler back in 2017. Um, which I did that because as usual, we're like, what's the hardest 50 miler I could do for my skill level. And I was like, well, let's do one at night through a forest. Like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So that was my <laughs> first 50. Uh, and then the next year was my first hundred, which was Mohican 100. And, right. uh, and that's where it's, you really, uh, talking about training and, and how it, it kind of gets going. I still didn't know what the hell I was doing at Mohican 100. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, you think you do and, uh, it, it all goes out the window, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, you don't know what you're doing and you show up and you feel good. And, and then by mile 60, it's like, whatever, man, give me a Coke and a burrito. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Right. So, <laughs> so it's, it, it's just a learning and it's learning every time I race now, but uh, yeah, training went from just time on feet to, to figuring it out in those couple of years. Right. And it's, yep. and now, like I said, it's crazy. I still feel like I'm new at this. Uh, I learn every race. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk, we're going to talk about world's end, but mm -hmm. go with the best intentions. You're like, man, screwed that up right <laughs> so, and that's how my training has been over the, over the last eight years or so man it's it's learning every day it really really is yeah so. which fast forward to um i guess over this winter you and i connected mm -hmm. um and uh you came to me with your goal um <laughs> of, of the triple crown um, right so we have to talk about the triple crown so people understand what this is and and why on earth you want to do it but <laughs> right right <laughs> um so um you know, we started our, our training process mm. together and, um, how has that been different for you? What has oh. been, what has been the biggest differences for you? Jeez, that's, this is just going to sound like I'm just kissing up pretty big, but I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it is, um, indescribable. And I mean that, and I'm not trying to sound corny, um, having, so I've always held myself very accountable to myself, right? But there's a difference in being accountable to somebody else. Mm. But there's even more when you're accountable because you the person gets what you're doing. Does that make sense? I hope mm -hmm. like mm. you know the ups and downs of the training. You've been there. You've seen it. You've got a ton of athletes that you coach. Um, and, and it's nice that I know when when I do have a bad day, we adjust it. And if mm. I have a great day, you can tell me to settle down. And you know, there's yeah. all those things. Um, I, I think the part we're, we're skipping over is I'd never had a coach before. Um, I had always said, what, what do I need a coach for, man? It's, it's just running, right? <laughs> kind of that, how to, you know, like I've got yeah. my buddies, I've got a, I've got a great crew and sure. I got a shout out to them. Uh, uh, Ronnie, Pete Rutherford, those are my guys. Um, they've been there for all of them. And likewise, we just crew each other's races, but uh, you know, we just feed off each other and that's right. how we train. But having you as a coach, 
has been amazing. And, and Alex, I don't want to skip over. When I called you, I hurt my back for the first time in my life. I had like a back injury. And so I'm already starting from the bottom. Like I've never been in a position where I couldn't run. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we found out it was like kind of a slip disc, kind of a glute situation, blah, blah, blah. And, and I remember I kept apologizing to you like, man, I can't believe you're taking me on as an athlete and I'm already crying. Like <laughs> I can't do things. So, um, it's incredible, right? Like in the gym every day, things I'd never done for training before fitness wise, I think it was immeasurable what we got done in that four weeks while I was coming back from that back injury. And then once we get into the training, man, it's just been, it's just been incredible. The progress that I feel personally, um, of just fitness. Um, I, I know I'm a middle pack runner. That's the main thing. You know, I'm, I'm not a podium guy and, uh, and I'm fine with that, right? I'm out there for the experience. Yeah. Uh, but I obviously I'm racing against myself all the time. I mean, that's my big, you've seen me in my training, right? I'm mm -hmm. always trying to push myself because um, I want to be better for myself every time. And how you've laid out this training plan has just been, I feel like I should be tired already. And I've told you that. And, and that was the main reason we connected was is like, when I decided to PA triple crown, that was going to be 34 week training block. Mm-hmm. I was like, how the hell am I going to get through 34 weeks <laughs> uninjured, not angry at training, you know, cause I've, I've gone by that book, that 24 week training plan, man, since yeah. day one. Right. And to jump out of that and realize, man, I could get a lot done doing things differently. I, I, I just can't speak highly enough of how you set things up. And, and I know we'll talk about it again, but something that I complained about to you early was like, man, do I get a day off? Nah. Like, where's my day off, man? Cause I was so used to Mondays and Fridays. Right. Right. And you're like, you'll eventually get a day off. Uh, but then my Mondays and Fridays now are those treadmill climbs, mm -hmm. that walking treadmill climb. And if everybody that's listening, I'm yelling it into the crowds, like <laughs> I'm getting, you know, three to 4,000 feet of gain in two days, just walking on a treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour. That is, man, that is paying the biggest mm -hmm. dividends, I think, of anything I've done. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like you can find an hour to walk on a treadmill, right? Because we right. get so uh, beat up with like, oh, I got a five-hour run today, or I've got to hit the gym for an hour and a two-hour run. But man, 45 minutes on a treadmill and still get 1,300 to 1,700 feet of gain, that works for what we're doing out here, at least for me, right? right? Yeah, There's a right. lot, yeah, awful okay. lot of... Uh, power hiking. I'd love to call it that, which we know it's not, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, walking. that's progressive walking. <laughs> correct. <laughs> Complaining. Um, but yeah, that, if that answers the question, your training, it's just been, um, like I said, I enjoy training now, if that makes any sense, I, I don't feel overworked. And that has always been, I think all of us have hit that point in our trainings. We're like, dude, mm -hmm. I need a week off or at least a couple of days. I have yet to feel that. And that's the exciting yeah. part. Yeah. So. And that's the communication. Like Chaz has been really good about communicating and telling me, you know, and then when we should go back to when you had the the back injury, it was also a collaborative, like we were going back and forth with your chiropractor, right? And like, yes, you know, like, hey, let's, you know, do this and let's make sure that we're not doing this. And so, you know, programming evolved because we were, you know, collaborating with your chiropractor and listening to medical advice, right? So, yeah. Um, that was huge, right? Like, it, you know, it's, it's, if we don't have that component, then it can be dicey, <laughs> right? Like you probably would have been injured a bit longer had we not sure. had that collaboration. So, well, and the, uh, and the beauty part of Dr. Murphy, and I'll shout out to her too, is she is a runner, right? She is a competitive marathoner. Uh, she's won the Columbus marathon. She's been on the Olympic trials and she gets what we're doing and mm -hmm. having the two of you, you know, I show her my training plan, right? She'd be like, I love it. Or she'd be like, ah, I'd rather you not do that kettlebell swing. It yep. was just awesome having both of you in my corner, knowing that we, this was not a time to rest. This was a time to improve. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what it came down to was, right. this isn't an injury like, oh, just let it rest. It'll be fine. It was the opposite of that. Like we got to work through this and get mm -hmm. yourself stronger. And the two of you made that happen quicker than I ever expected for sure. And it was just, what can we do? Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, instead of what, what can't we do? I mean, obviously there yeah. was that component, but it was, you know, yeah. well, what can we do? And that's absolutely what we just worked on as a team. So that was, I love that piece of it. Cause I think uh, a lot of times we forget that there are other people that can be in our corner and it's mm -hmm. even as professionals, you know, being coach, 
chiropractor, a lot of times um, there's a disconnect, you know, we don't make that connection and it's, you know, it, it should be that way across the board where, you know, as you said, you showed her your training plan, you showed her workouts and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what you know, athletes truly need. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Coop in his, one of his latest episodes talked about having that, you know, collective team and that eventually mm -hmm. that's what it's going to be is like a collective right? Like you come into a collective and that's, that's hard because that can be super expensive, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, like mine will always be coaching with, I'll have resources that people can use, you know, to, you know, to kind of go to if they don't have them themselves, but you know, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting topic of conversation because yeah, like you said, it was right at the beginning. <laughs> it was, uh, well, it's, it, but it speaks to ultra running too, right? Like all mm -hmm. of this. And, and I think that's, what's beautiful about our sport uh, is it's always a collaborative effort. Every race mm -hmm. you go to, you, you get friends real quick at an aid station, right? <laughs> like everybody's your buddy and everybody's <laughs> trying to help each other. And um, I think having a coach and a good doctor and then your friends that are always there for you. I, I don't think it's tough to do this sport uh, without that collaboration. It really is. And mm -hmm. I, and they go back to the injury. And I think that's for everybody. Everybody's been injured. Um, and I think the hardest part is to not let that injury sit you down. Like, I mean, that was what I learned. Like it's, dude, this is not put some ice packs on your back and pray for the best. It was like, Hey, get on that elliptical, man. Let's do some weights. Let's get that back strong. And I think for all of us to get injured legs back, we all do your ankle, right? Mm -hmm. You got to work through yep. these things. And, yep. and I think that's an important part of this, not just sitting back and pouting about it, which I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to pout for a few seconds <laughs> part of the process, but yeah, we can't linger. Um, so the triple crown, uh, the triple crown, what, like what, you know, spurred this, it, it, it's three separate races. So let's first go through the races, go ahead and uh, talk about, you know, distance race date and let's start there. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I decided the triple crown. It's, it's been on the list for a few years. Uh, as I didn't get into Western States, me and a million other people this year for, <laughs> I think my sixth year in a row, I think it was, um, uh, I've always been interested in Pennsylvania races because all I do is complain about how hard they are. And, <laughs> but I always go back to them because it's just an incredible race community for anybody out there in the Pennsylvania community. I can't say enough about the people. Uh, and the triple crown is just always like, what a cool idea. Uh, three really difficult races spaced out perfectly to just really beat you up over a, a summer. <laughs> so uh, the first race is the Heiner 50K, um, which uh, a lot of people have heard of. It's a, I think this was its, don't quote me, real close to 20th year of the Heiner 50K. Uh, an incredible race. Ran for as many people that run that race. Uh, and that's, I mean, there's almost a thousand people, which is between the hundred K and the, Right between the 50K and the 25K. And and I was actually a little concerned about that. Like, man, it's a lot of people and that's just kind of not my speed. Uh, I did that at Black Canyon, but that's Black Canyon. Like that's, they've got that dialed in for a billion people. But anyways, right. um, but Heiner's just so well ran and such a community. And I mean, the party afterwards, amazing. I know I'm skipping ahead, but uh, it's just a great <laughs> place. Uh, so you get Heiner and then, uh, and then, to me, it's 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 world's end is the big speed bump for me. Uh, and we'll talk about that, I guess, later. Uh, so world's end that we just had this past weekend, the 100K. Um, and then you go over to Eastern States in August. Um, and that's on August 10th. And then they have, that's the triple crown, the triple crown of ultra running in Pennsylvania. So um, yes, there is a little bit of an award at the end. It's like a log with your name on it, which is perfect for ultra runners, right? Like, <laughs> Here you go, dummy. Here's a piece of wood with your name on it. Enjoy, <laughs> right? So, um, is it's, it, it's just, it's exciting. Is it, is it the same three race organizations that put on all three or no? So no, uh, Craig Fleming is the race director of Heiner. And he okay. also does, uh, I think, Boulder Beast. Uh, and I think a couple others. I don't want to misquote anything. But uh, but then World's End and Eastern States, uh, the main RD for World's End, his name's David Thoreau. And his co-RD is Ben Mazur. And then Ben Mazur is the RD now of Eastern States and also puts on a, a race called Ironstone 100K, which looks diabolical. And <laughs> I'll probably end up doing that eventually, right? So <laughs> it looks terrible. Um, so different groups, but same people, if that yeah. makes sense. It's, okay. you know, running Heiner, every person you talk to is like, well, you doing a triple crown? 
you know, and then uh, you run in world's end. Everybody's like, you do a triple crown. And, and then we'll, if you want to talk about, I found out this thing called the blacklist during Heiner, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm running the triple crown. Well, you're going to do the blacklist, right? I'm like, well, what's that? <laughs> well, the black forest hundred K is in October. And if you do that, you're on the blacklist. I'm like, ah, ah. damn it. <laughs> Guess I'm doing that now, of yeah. course, right? So, <laughs> so right now the focus is on a triple crowd, but I think we all know where this street leads. So yes. uh, we get through Eastern States and I may or may not already have a campsite at the uh, start line of that fourth race. <laughs> I haven't signed up for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, how many times have you done uh, Heiner and World's End in Eastern States? So Heiner was my first time. Okay. Um, and that was always a, it's funny. The the problem with Heiner is it runs the same weekend as forget the PR. So we'll go full circle. I have been signed up for Heiner probably three times because you have to sign up the second that thing goes up for registration. It mm-hmm. sell it for a thousand people. It sells out in minutes. It's insane. Yeah. So I sign up for it and then forget the PR weekend gets set. And for the last three years, it's been the same weekend. And I refuse to miss forget the PR. Um, but then with the triple crown this year, I decided, okay, man, I'm I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run Heiner. And uh it was very difficult to not be a forget the PR. I mean, truly, like it was uh I had my buddy that crewed me this morning, Big Pete. He took over his aid station captain for me. And you know, it was like uh it's weird to describe like not being at that race and running a race. All I was thinking about was forget the PR all weekend. But anyways. So first time at Heiner, uh, this was my second time at World's End. And um, if we want to unpack that disgusting luggage, um, <laughs> I ran World's End in 2019. It is um, It was the most difficult day I've ever had on the trail, uh, mentally, physically. Um, to skip to the end, it ended my year in 2019. Um it was the last race I did. I ended up having an incredible 2019 because I crewed and paced like four other hundreds of some of my best friends in the world. You know, <laughs> um, I went out and, and did Kodiak with a buddy or, you know, paced it and, and ran and crewed and Indiana trail. Luce, oh, I had a great time, but that race wrecked me in mm-hmm. 2019. It just, I went in there with some, uh, some grandiose goals of like a sub 15 day, Feeling oh, really good about myself. Yeah. Oh, watch this. I just did a hundred miler. I'm just going to go do this hundred K because it looks mm-hmm. hard. Well, I did that race in 1841. <laughs> <Came> in <laughs> 19 minutes under the cutoff. Um, oh, goodness. Man. Uh, just a day, man. Like just, we had, uh, it was, they call it, and it's funny, this year is the 10th anniversary of World's End. And the race director, you know, during our race meet was like, hey, I'm going to go over some of my favorite memories from the last 10 years. And he brings up 2019. They call it the mud year. And you're like, oh, yeah, I know, man, I was there. I, <laughs> I get it. So it's, it's nice that you, your crappy year has a name to it, right? The mud year. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, that race. Um, and then the other part after mile 50, a thunderstorm came in and I ran through a lot of weather and a lot of races and that was the first time and last time I've ever been truly scared to death. Like lightning, we were up on like one clearing. It's like the only type you're, time you're exposed. And Dan, there was lightning like you're running like duck down. Like you think you're going <laughs> like, to It was just absolutely miserable. And uh, one funny story after that, and we'll talk about more, but it's the first time I really wanted to DNF a race. Like mm. I was just, I'd had enough, man. And I was mentally nervous and scared and cold and all the things right and uh we get to the, this aid station it's just a water aid station water drop it i keep telling myself man if i make it to there and there's somebody there i'm quitting because it's buckets of rain just pouring it's terrible and there's a guy in a truck sitting at the water and i, I fill my water and i'm just telling myself man don't quit don't do it don't you dare so i'm just ignoring his existence right and i'm filling my water bottles and i'm walking <laughs> away and he rolls down the window of the truck and he's like, buddy, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. He goes, hey, I just want to let you know, man, when it stops raining, this road gets filled with snakes. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. <laughs> I didn't need to hear that shit. What are we doing? And I just put my head down and just went. But it was funny. A few minutes later, a guy came out of the woods, another runner. And he, we hugged. 
It's the most random thing. And he's like, dude, are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay. Are you okay? We hugged like we'd known each other for 20 years. And we're like, let's walk this bastard in, man. Let's just get this thing over with. So, oh, uh, that race, man. So there's a lot to unpack there. That race just about killed me. It's just mud and rocks. And, and for everybody that's ran in Pennsylvania, man, there's some roundable sections, but uh, geez, Pennsylvania just beats you to death. It's just a yeah. monster. And yes. uh yeah. Beautiful. I mean, the water, I don't want to any, I want to speak so highly of that world's end race. The race directors are incredible. It is probably one of the best ran races I've done. Aid stations are top notch. The course is gorgeous waterfalls, but man, it'll, it'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it'll absolutely kill you. So uh, and, and, uh, <sighs> have you done Eastern? I have not done Eastern. Okay. So that's uh that one's always been in the corner, like a little nervous about, not a little nervous, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> when I signed up for it this year, it's the first time I signed up for a race and immediately went, oh boy, yikes. <laughs> like I'm I'm nervous about Eastern because I, one, it's Pennsylvania. Two, yeah. I know I'm going to be fighting the weather. Um, mm -hmm. I know all the things at Eastern, right? We all yeah. know the stories from Eastern oh, states. Yes. You're going to get the weather. You're going to mm -hmm. get, you, you know, the you know you're know you getting the climbs. That's like, yeah. Yeah. that's happening, but it's yeah. those those other things and you know is it going to be hot yeah. is it going to be cold is it right. going to be storms yes, yes. probably yes <laughs> all those things yeah <laughs> yes uh, it, yeah yes so, uh, it's i i hadn't uh i hadn't started the podcast um when i did eastern and um i went into that with with big goals like you had for world's end and um my day quickly <laughs> turned south um so i i, I went out too hard um and then um, we don't do that i can't imagine yeah yeah I, I went out way too hard um it's like an idiot and then um i had i've been doing trail work um getting ready for a race that i was going to put on in the fall but i hadn't i wasn't wearing ear protection and i i caused a um a, a temporary um inner ear dysfunction which caused oh, me God. a lot of of uh, vertigo and so Ugh. about mile i don't know 20 ish i started experiencing a lot of vertigo symptoms and the ground was literally like shaking Ugh. and i like i couldn't track my eyes to, to focus and i got into i think it was i don't remember it was it was probably maybe around 40 and my my family was there and i had um i, I had finished um canadian death race and that was the first time my kids got to see me finish an ultra mm. And I was in tears. I was in tears, <sighs> uh, just sitting there in tears, just because I had just come through a rainstorm. Um, I had ex I'd run past like three rattlesnakes, and Gosh. I was just in wretched shape, like your world's end. It was probably <laughs> the worst condition I was ever in in a race, and I was so frustrated. I couldn't see straight, uh, and I was just. You know, I'm laughing out of myself. love, brother. Oh I god, it. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 I can look back at it and laugh at myself because. But I tell you, it was that little girl that, you know, mm. and I told this story before she looked at me and she says, I want to see you finish this race like you did at the oh. death race. Oh. And I had a pair of old hiking poles. They were aluminum telescoping, nice. um, black diamond, huge foam grips. Like they were not the, you know, the, the running poles that we have today. I said, get me the poles. And, um, you know, I spoke to my doctor afterwards. She's like, that's, that was the right thing to do because it gave you the appropriate reception. You probably sure. needed it to balance. And, um, I went out of there listening to some Cypress Hill <laughs> saying, you, we ain't going out like that. <laughs> and nice. I got back on the Amazing. trail and, and finished that puppy. It was not easy. Ugh. It was not fun. Um, it, you know, it is a beautiful course. It is extremely challenging. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's amazing what we can do, you know, testament to the human spirit. Cause that's it. there are those days. <laughs> are it's it days. definitely fitness is, you know, we all say it, right. It's yeah. you get past a certain mile and it's 90% metal. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yes. I, I don't know what that mile is for you or for oh, anybody yeah. that's it's, listening. And it's different every time. <laughs> that's right. It is absolutely different every time. And, <laughs> and that speaks to my race this past weekend as, uh, it happened early. Yeah. And, uh, and I, like, I, I, it's just a rough day again, uh, but in a different way for different reasons. So, yeah, well, and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly talk about that one too, but, um, so Eastern States is August 10th. Yeah. Um, and so right now we're, we're recovering from, from Heiner, uh, excuse me, from world's end. Yeah. Um, but let's go back to, um, to Heiner. Um, uh, let's talk about Heiner for a moment. 
um, run us through that day. <laughs> so this is funny. You'll appreciate it. And, and my friends do too. It's a boring story. Why? <laughs> I had a perfect day, right? It was awesome. Like I have, I, it's funny. That's what we all joke about. Like, Hey, at least you're always gonna have a good story, but you know how we are as trail runners. Like nobody wants to hear about your perfect 68 <laughs> degrees, sunny day. Like who cares? But uh, that's exactly what I had, man. Um, you know, I remember asking you before the race, like, what do you want me to do? And you're like, you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I took it just above conservative, right? I guess mm -hmm. is the is the way to describe it is um, my goal that day for that 50K was it truly, I made it a training run. No offense to the race, but it was a, yeah. it was a training run, right? Mm -hmm. And my goal was to feel good all day. And I did. I I my nutrition was on point. My, I ran when I was supposed to run. I pushed hills when I could. I, you know, I did all the things you and I had worked on and I just felt good all day. And, and it's like a short story, man. Like I remember, uh, you know, sending you a message afterwards, like I had some left in the tank and that's where we wanted to be. Right. Yep. Um, I didn't fall down after the finish line and pray for a beer. I was like, all right, man, like <laughs> I could go for a run again. Right. And that's, it's such a lame story, man. It went great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the race is great. It's, it's so well done. Um, God, it's, uh, it's a boring story. It's great. It's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing we had World's End then. <laughs> we wouldn't have much of a podcast without it. <laughs> Plenty of complaint about all that one, man. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, as you said, World's End is an extremely challenging course. Um, mm. It's, I mean, it's it's the best in Pennsylvania, <laughs> the best and the worst. <laughs> it is that for sure. Um, so yeah, let's let's run through World's End. Oh, all right, World's End. So <laughs> um, I I know I signed up for the for the first time because I was looking for a Western States qualifier in the middle of the summer. And I just didn't see anything that like spoke to me, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And yeah, I sure. saw this like, man, a 13,000 foot gain 100K sounds pretty fun. And it's a qualifier. Why not? That's what it is. It's a qualifier for a reason. A uh, 19 hour cutoff, um, hard cutoff. Um, so this year's World's End. Uh, you've already heard my tale of woes from 2019. Um <laughs> So this year I went in, in the best shape. I truly believe that I'm in the best fitness I've ever had. And I mean that wholeheartedly because of you. Um, I feel like I'm an experienced runner, more experienced than I was, right? I've got, you know, 25 plus ultras since World's End, you know, and a couple hundreds, a couple no businesses in there, Mohican and Black. I've got some, some runs that I've seen a lot of different places, right? Damn that place, World's End. So... <laughs> I think it's just an unrelenting course. Um, you get about a mile. They give you the old first mile shakeout run, right? Mm -hmm. You run through the campground to, <laughs> till they really start punching you in the face. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, you, you turn me on to that ultra pacer, mm -hmm. which is good Lord. As you said, <laughs> don't get in the weeds. Well, it's hard not to. That <laughs> yeah, I know. Thing. But anyways, uh, if you look at ultra pacer for a sub 16 finish, your first mile should be a 10 and your second mile is a 20, right? Like that. <laughs> like your, like, like, There's the punch. So, yeah, right, man. Like right in the face, right <laughs> off the rip. Um, so World's End is really three or four sustained climbs, but it is just as described, you know, I described death by a thousand cuts. Um, it is just an up and downhill battle all day. And then a lot of the sections that are runnable, are mud like and not like it's it's weird mud man like how is there mud on top of a plateau like it's not <laughs> it's supposed to run down right like where's all this mud from and uh so there's a lot of sections that you get frustrated because of the pennsylvania footing and then there's mud in between there and it's mm. just it's mentally very challenging because mm. you're like i am burning time where i should be running uh now obviously there's got the guys that win this thing are crush getting 1145 and there's just different humans than I am but uh but the race is just so difficult um because there's no real break um there's just no time to take a breath and say all right man I could gain some time here it is 
a struggle to keep your time aid station, aid station. And uh, I was very pleased with my race uh, going into 18. Uh, the first time I saw my crew, I was actually about 25 minutes ahead of pace. And I told Pete, I said, dude, I'm not pushing. Like I, I, I was very comfortable with how I was performing. Right. I wasn't okay. trying to go too fast. I, I felt like I was doing the things I'd planned on doing. And, and let's pause there for Please. a second. Yeah. Um, uh, cause you and I came up with three plans. Mm -hmm. Um, so talk about those going back to ultra pacer, um, and which plan were you 25 minutes ahead of <laughs> the 16 hour plan, okay. the 16 hour plan. So that was my, that was my a goal was sub 16 and then B, uh, B was sub 17 yep. and then 18 was like anything better than that shit show 2019 <laughs> race. Right. That's pretty much was the goal. Um, and I felt like I was ready for the sub 16. I really did. Uh, physically, um, we'll talk about the mental side, I think is what the biggest hindrance. Um, okay. But yeah, I feel like I was ahead of the pace, but I didn't feel like I was pushing that pace. If that makes any sense. I, I, I didn't feel like I was overextending myself at that point. Um, if we can jump back to mile 10 is this is where I think my day started to take the turn already Okay. is mentally I didn't want to be there. And, mm. and that's no offense to this race. I, I don't want anybody. I, 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 that race beats me up and it's been live. I've told you before, it's been living rent free, man, <laughs> since 2019. It just, <laughs> I tell people are tired of hearing me talk about it. This is the worst day I ever had. And that race tried to kill me and this and that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I mean, you can ask Pete and even my boss, I talked to my fire chief on the way home. He's, I said, well, I'll be less nuts this week. He goes, thank God, dude, you were a mess last week. <laughs> I mean, this race just consumed me. Um, Cause I was scared, I guess, again, right? Like I knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. I knew what I had gone through uh, and I just didn't want to do it again. So mile 10, I remember I was, I was eating a chew and I was like, man, I don't want to be here. And that's, that's just no way to be for what we're doing. Right. Like, right. as I said, a lot of this is mental and to already have an attitude of like, dude, I just want this to be over with. And it wasn't out of fitness. I wasn't tired. I wasn't like, I just didn't want to be there. I really just wanted to see the finish line and say, see ya. I'll never see you again. <laughs> Get out of my way, right? Um, so I think that's where the, the day turned a little sour early, um, okay. mentally, but not physically. Physically started at about mile, uh, just about mile 25 or 30. I had, uh, when I got in to see uh, Pete at 32, I was dead on time like exact time per ultra pacer. Um, so I knew I'd lost about a half hour, which I wasn't sweating at. I didn't feel like I'd lost that half hour. If that makes sense. Like I was still feeling, but I was starting to, the day was starting to wear on me, right? The, the climbs, the heat was starting to ramp up, not bad, but just enough. Uh, but my nutrition, let's speak to that again. For the first time in years, my nutrition was garbage on Saturday. I, uh, I've been using Tailwind for eight years and by mile 20, I just didn't want to taste it ever again. Like it was weird. And I used the, the naked flavor. Uh, I just hated it. Um, and I didn't want to eat anything, which is not like me anymore. Like potatoes were great. Like I was just, I was being that runner, right? Like, ugh, I don't want anything. Um, <laughs> you know, my, my crew chief, Pete, he's trying to feed me food. And I'm like, dude, just give me a watermelon, which is worthless, which we all know it's good, but it's not doing anything. And I was eating orange slices, like a kindergartner. Like that's the only thing that made sense to me. Um, so struggled on, uh, not struggled, still just having a day, but then mile 40, just prior to mile 40 is where the wheels kind of started getting pretty wobbly. Um, I came into the aid station and my, I looked at Pete's face and I knew I was not doing great. Um, at this point I had lost about I think I had lost about 40 minutes now, about 40 minutes off pace from the 16 hour, half hour, 40 minutes. Now that was a tough section. It's an eight mile section. It's a grinder. Uh, it's just a, a, a an up and down, a lot of mud, a couple big climbs, but it's a grind. Everybody calls it. the. It's just a grinder, man. You just try to get through it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so mile 40, I was dizzy. I don't, I've never been dizzy that I can recall. Um, I lied to Pete and he was like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. He's like, you're all right. I'm like, 
eh, I'm a little dizzy. I was more than a little dizzy. I was pretty uncomfortable. Um, and he said, have you taken any salt? And I was like, well, I'm drinking my tailwind. I've never needed salt. There's another lie. I mean, I'm drinking my tailwind, but I'm now, I'm, I usually have two bottles of tailwind. I hated tailwind so much. I was doing one water and one tailwind. So now I'm, I'm going calorie deficient, right? Um, Cause I try to do 200 an hour at the very least. Um, he threw me a salt tab and I just immediately stood. I was like, I got to go, man. Like I, I just want to get the hell out of there. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I knew the longer I sat, we know the chair, man. Mm-hmm. I don't sit in the chair very often. And I was like, I'm getting out of here. So stumbled around a little bit more, uh, came in at mile 50, big climb. Oh, and there's a huge climb out of 40, man. It just is, it's God awful. It's a, I think there's that section is like a 1600 foot climb. Uh, just, it's a beater, but uh, hammered through that. Got to 50 and lost a little bit more time, but not a bunch. I was hammering uh, endurance tap gels. That's one thing that uh, I use. Uh, it's just the maple syrup and ginger. I can't speak enough about them. The I've been tap. using them for about. Yeah. I, so I use the endurance tap. The actual, It's like the other brand from Canada. Oh, okay. Uh, they're just incredible. I, endurance. What was it called? En- endurance tap. Tap. Okay. Yeah. They're just, they are, I call a little magic i give them out to people like try this like wow that's legit like they're they're my favorite um i'm pretty basic man tailwind endurance tap and sun-kissed candies (laughs) that's (laughs) that's pretty much what i carry with me but um the i guess to 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 end this nonsense is the the best part of the day was from 50 to the finish i lost no more time um i kind of you know put myself together focused a little bit more and realized that, okay, I've, I've ruined the sub 16 goal. I refuse to let this race beat me again. Like, I'm just not going to do it. And um, so it's like, all I got left is sub 17. And I came into the last aid station and uh, Pete said, Chaz, you got an hour and 25 minutes to go six miles, which on a normal day, you're like, all right. And then, but that day you're like, Jesus, dude, I don't know. If I, guess, I don't know if I got that in me. <laughs> the, the best part about world's end is they give you, for the last day station, they give you five miles of running. Like mm-hmm. it is the only time of the day. <laughs> it is you're on a fire road and like a you're on roads, like you know, back roads. Mm-hmm. But then they kick you one last time. <laughs> the last half half mile is just you might as well sit on your butt and fall down. Like it is just <laughs> straight down. I'm not like you're grabbing trees and your legs are smoked. Um uh, to give you an example, it was 2019, that last half mile took me 18 minutes. This year took like 11, right? Yeah. If that's, it's still, it's just miserable, man. It's just right. awful. But, uh, but I mean, it was just a tough day, man. Um, I'm really, it's funny. I should be more pleased with my finish than my buddies keep telling me like, dude, you should be more excited. But I still, that course just beats you, man. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, I came in at 1655, which I, I I'm thrilled with, um, you know, I, I crushed big air quotes, crushed mm-hmm. my PR there, but I still feel that that course owns me, man. Like it's just, <laughs> you know, I'm talking on the, on the drive home yesterday. It's like, I don't know where to gain time. I don't know where to get any better at that race. <laughs> and you know what? I don't care. Cause I'm never going back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it comes down to. Oh, 1655. You can etch that dude in stone. I'm done yeah. out there. So. Um, so a few things that, you know, I kind of jotted down, um, you know, tailwind seemed to kind of fail you a bit. Um, yeah, weird. And I know. Um, and it's, it's strange. Um, especially for Eastern States though, if it does fail, you got to have a backup, right? There's got to be something else that you can toy with between now and, um, mm-hmm. and, and Eastern States that you can find, you know, some other similar brand, um, that does something similar, you know, has a good electrolytes, has good carbs and calories. Um, so, you know, be working on that for sure. Yeah. We're going to talk about that for sure. I was in my yeah. notes from the race that cool. Very I finally good. got done today. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. And what Chaz, we have a debrief that we fill out after every race. And then we kind of chat through that to, to go through how things went and where we can make improvements. Um, so that's, that's huge. Um, I'm glad you had the three different plans and you know, what Chaz mm-hmm. and I also talk about is being okay with making sure that you're okay. If a is not going right. Mm-hmm. And his, you know, his goal obviously was to get through this, um, whatever it took so you can get into and through the triple crown. 
So, you know, kudos for being okay with, you know, A's like not happening, but you know, you want to get it done. So I, that's, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that is great. Um, and I mean, the other big thing is um, maybe communicating better with the, the crew, right. Cause mm. they can help problem solve mm -hmm. and, and, right and, and being honest with them, you know, it's, it's always the best policy because then, you know, your race can also turn around if you're being completely mm -hmm. honest, like I'm sucking at electrolytes right now. I'm not really doing good with, <laughs> with my calories and yep. I, you know, I, I need to figure things out. So um, being a little bit more open and honest, I think are the biggest things. Um, any other takeaways you had that you want to share? Um, things that you would change moving forward, things that you felt went right, things that you felt um, you could do better. I, I, I know that, like, time wise, you, you're like, nah, I don't think I could have made time anywhere. I, I, else, I don't. Like and, and, you know, I did a real, I'm very pleased with um, my aid station times. I hammered through aid stations. I, I'm not a, I don't dilly dally, man. I, I just need water for my tailwind, grab me a Coke, ginger ale, and I'm out the door 99% of the time. Um, I really feel like my training. Okay. So we'll just end with like the main part is this mentally, I think what slowed me down and created a problem was my mental game that day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I texted you, I said, man, this is, I thought about you during my run, like what a podcast, like I put so much on my shoulders for this race because of how badly I wanted to get through it again. I don't mm -hmm. know if that makes sense, but like this and like I said, Pete was kept telling me, he's like, dude, I've never seen you like this. Like, like the day before the race. I mean, I was a disaster, like frantic, acting like an idiot. Like, I don't want to eat. I'm all nervous. Like it was nuts. And um, I guess my takeaway is this is supposed to be fun. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> this PA triple crown is supposed to be fun. I know it's gonna be hard. Everything right. we do is hard, but like, this is fun. My training has been fun and my time in the woods is fun. I put so much pressure on this damn race that it made it a job. Like it made it yeah. like one foot in front of the other and get this thing over with and get the hell out of here. And that's, mm -hmm. dude, that's no way to, why would we do that? There's no point in this sport, hobby, whatever you want to call it. If that's, if that's your mindset, I just don't, I think some of us, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, man. Like sometimes we just put too much pressure on ourselves to perform mm -hmm. when we're just out there, man, like, I'm not speaking to the front runners. They have, that's what they do. Right. But right. a lot of us are out here to just challenge ourselves. And yeah. as long as we're doing what we love, man, like who cares, like just go out and have a good time and crack a beer at the finish line and say, well, that mm -hmm. was fun. Right. Yeah. This time, yeah. you know, and that, and that speaks this race. I, uh, I told Pete, I was ready to go. Like didn't hang out the finish line. Didn't eat anything. Just, it was like, let's go back to camper, man. I'm, I'm done here. <laughs> so, you know, it's, yeah. And, well, and it's, once again, I want to speak to the race. I don't want if, you know, those guys, I can't say enough about this race. It's mm -hmm. incredible. I mean, I ran to people who ran it for seven, eight years. This is their favorite race. The race is incredible. Please go run it. Like if you want a challenging, beautiful East coast course, go get you some. Yep. I'll cheer you on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard. I mean, to your point, you had such a negative experience. Mm -hmm. How do you separate yourself from that experience? That's the really difficult part is that since you had such a bad experience the first time, not and nothing against the race. It's just mm -hmm. what happened during the race that, you know, you've got this negative connotation built up in your mind, that, you know, that, well, here I go. I got to do it again. And it's hard to separate yourself from that. It really is. That, that's, you know, that's, I mean, you know, that's instinctual almost, right? Like, why would I put myself through this again? So it's, exactly. that's, that's hard, you know, and, and, you know, the day before knowing that the next day within the next 24 hours, you're going to be starting at that line and doing everything that you did that first time. It's, that's really hard to, to, to separate yourself from. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's definitely like a, a talk with a, a psychologist about, yeah, like, you know, how do I separate myself from this? Like that's, yep. that, that goes deep. So, I mean, you know, a testament to your toughness though, to, to be able to step to the line and knowing you have all these negative thoughts about the race, like to, to get through it, you know, that's, that's pretty powerful, man. Like there's not many people that, <laughs> that put themselves back in that situation. And I mean, you know, we all have, and you finished the first time, which is mm -hmm. you know, yeah. most of us when we're having that negative of experience, we DNF, <laughs> uh, you know, and myself is in that boat. <laughs> like, I mean, I have DNF and, 
you know, said, all right, well, I need to go back, right? Like, I know there was mm -hmm. a ton of mistakes or I just didn't have yeah. my day. But, you know, a lot of times, but you finished and we're like, no, I got to go back and, and do this yeah. to get this triple crown, which, you know, it, it's cool that the triple crown meant that much enough to you yeah. to say, I'm going to do <sighs> this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny to add that in is uh, I came at the aid station at 40 and in classic ultra rider fashion, I looked at Pete and I said, dude, I'm not doing Eastern States. And he looked at me and goes, dude, just shut the F up. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So he looked me right in the eye like, I know I'm full of crap, man. I got it. I, I know where I'm at. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's Eastern States is amazing. We'll, we're going to have, you know, our, our own conversation about Eastern States and, and yeah. talk about, you know, the course and everything. Um, and um, again, make kind of a better plan for, for nutrition mm -hmm. just in case it goes yep. sideways. Yep. Um, I think those would be the big things. Um, gear wise, everything seemed to, to work out. Yeah. Well. So yeah. Um, you talked me into using poles. Well, talk me into it. You, you, uh, you know, my, my buddy, well, I keep bringing up Pete and he's going to get tired of hearing his face yeah. on here. <laughs> so he was training for Coca Dota okay. and he started using poles and he's like, Chaz, you're a game changer. And I think I mentioned that to you. Yeah. He said, what do you think about poles, man? You're like, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I got those leckies and man, uh, Jace game changer. They really are. Um, yeah. I think if nothing else, it's like a placebo effect mentally on those climbs, right? Like right. Right. it's, it's, I feel like I'm moving faster than I am, which is great. Um, I use that Solomon X 12. I swear by that pack. I know you use it and I have the same complaint. You do that damn back is hot on there, yeah, but right. yeah. it just, it doesn't chafe. I mean, my that thing's wet. I was wet all day yesterday. Uh, I didn't chafe at all. Again, uh, feet were good. Like I, gear wise, man, I'm squared away. It's cool. uh, yeah. I, I really kind of upset about my nutrition, but that once again, that's on me. Um, I know better. I, I I know what I should have been doing. I wasn't listening to my crew. Come on, get some calories. Ah, uh, I'll get some in a minute. You know, the same <laughs> crap that we all say to each other, right? So, yep. Yep. yeah, that's that's the big one. And I know that Eastern States is. That's the show, man. Like, that's mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Easter State's one of those races. It doesn't get the credit it deserves. Um, it's secret crazy. Like, that's a tough race. Everybody I've talked to said, dude, it is. That's a big boy race. It um, is. It is. So yeah. I know I got to get dialed in, right, for that yeah. one. And we got nine weeks, which yeah. is insane. <laughs> that's uh, like yeah. nine weeks away. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, here we are nine weeks out and basically, you know, we recovered this week and then you get into mm -hmm. your maximum volume phase. So it's go time. Uh, yep. 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 <laughs> so it's it's coming. Um, and I talked about last week. The only thing um, that I found about the, um, the Solomon is I, I, I've been using that new S lab, the ultra 10. Um, it's a, uh, I think a collaboration with uh, Francois de Haine. And that pack is so lightweight and breathable. Um, now the pockets are a bit loose. That's my only thing about it. Mm -hmm. I did Jeez, 25 so. yesterday and nothing fell out. You know, I was, nice. I was fine and, and, you know, it was good, but you know, like I said, it, if, um, if you're running at faster speeds, I, I would worry about something popping out. So it, it may need a little bit of a, I think a I'm pass, good, but <laughs> yeah, it, it like it, it seemed to work really well. Um, good. And breathable, you know, I mean, yesterday was <clears throat> we're pouring rain here and, and it wasn't hot at all, but you know, it, it definitely, it's, I've used it in warmer weather and it, it worked well. So, um, but that's, that's the only thing that I found, um, you know, to kind of think about replacing the, mm -hmm. the 12, I'm still a big 12 fan, but you yeah, know, as you it. said, especially going out West when it's hot, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just a little bit worried, especially with me and, and overheating. So, yeah, um, that's where I, I, I run hot, man. And that's, yeah. Yeah, I get so, it. Well, all right, man. Um, so yeah, Eastern States, August tenth, and then October, the Black Forest one hundred k. So the real quick story on that. Yeah, do you want to hear? I mean, that's yeah, absolutely. Runs down. <laughs> so I didn't know anything about it. Well, I yeah, you'd heard about it, didn't really pay attention. But of course, you're running Heiner, and everybody's like, "Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing the Triple Crown." Well, then you going to do the Blacklist. I'm like, what? What's that? Oh man. It's the Black Forest 100K in October. And if you do that, you're on a thing called the Blacklist. So us being dumb ultra runners like, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, so what that is, is uh, I know very little about the race. So I'll just, I'll tell you what I know. I know it's uh, it, it starts at Heiner. 
at the at the actual state park, okay. which I may or may not already have a campsite set up there uh, yeah. for that race day. Um, it's a hundred k that starts at midnight. Uh, no crew, no pacers, and uh, I think thirteen thousand feet of gain. Something stupid again, you know, just misery, <laughs> just whatever. So, is it an um, organized event? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an organized yeah. event. It's okay. um. I, don't, I think it's the same race directors and, and don't quote me on that. I'm not hundred percent on the race director on black four. I know it's a, it's been there quite a bit. They run it opposite directions each year um, mm-hmm. out of that park. I can't tell you how long it's been going on, but uh, I'm, I'm focusing on Eastern States. I really don't want to look ahead, but <laughs> as we do, right. Like it's, yeah. As much as I had to hear about it again on Saturday, it's like, oh, man, I have to do that damn race, man. As long as we get through Eastern States, right? So, and you know, like I told my wife, because of course she gave me the face when I said, hey, uh, <laughs> there's a fourth race in October. <laughs> and she gave me the face, which we've all seen from yeah. our significant others. Absolutely. And I said, well, honey, this is a once in a lifetime. Like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> so I kind of have to do it. We'll Until see what next year. Let's get <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. She's not listening. So <laughs> let's just uh let's just get through Eastern States, right? And then we'll we'll talk about Black Forest right. and the blacklist. You have Good to Lord. you have to break them in a little bit at a time, <laughs> right? right? Like it's... like I introduced the tour de Jeans a few years ago, right? Oh god, yeah. And, and my wife's like, so we're going to Italy next year? <laughs> and I was like, uh-huh. I get uh, in. <laughs> sure. So like, they get used to the idea and then they start thinking That's... about it. So you make these cool destination races and they're like <laughs> I could spend some time in Italy. <laughs> so you'll appreciate this, man. I pulled the same thing. Next year is our 20th anniversary, and we nice. had our uh, honeymoon in Ireland. Oh, nice. And there's a 120 miler called <laughs> the Carry Way Ultra. <laughs> and I was like, honey, we could go. And it's like, a, it's a, one of my goal races because yeah. it's in Ireland. Yeah. And I've been playing that seat for two years. And I think <laughs> well I've got done. her. I think I got her sucked <laughs> in on that. Like, <laughs> we'll spend, you know, I'll go run the race and we'll spend a couple of weeks celebrating our 20th. So That's let's nice. see if I pull that off, man. <laughs> I wish you well. <laughs> you as well, brother. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, Chaz. Oh man, well, congratulations thus far. Um, thank you. you know, hopefully we can have you back on uh after Eastern States and maybe talk awesome. about that and, and wrapping up the, the triple crown and then uh you know if, if Black Forest one hundred K that goes Stupid. down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me thank you for everything and, and I, I can't thank you enough. And this is the the kiss it up section of man, what you've done for me since December, January has been immeasurable and I've appreciated your, your friendship and your just, you get what we're doing out here, man. And that makes it the bad days that much better, right? Like I know I've got a bad day coming, <laughs> but then you give me a good day after the bad day, right? Like, Oh, I'm sorry. I got a nine mile progression run. That's going to suck. But Hey, you know what? <laughs> Tomorrow I have to do like six. So it's, <laughs> I always appreciate how you beat us up and, and, and bring us back. So thank you for everything, man. It's been awesome. And thanks for having me today. This is cool. Yeah. Thank you, so. Chaz. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Chaz, for your open, honest conversation. Um, I appreciate Chaz. He's such a great athlete and uh, such a joy to coach. Really fun. Um, you know, very committed. Uh, always wants to dot his I's and cross his T's and make sure that he gets everything in, which is awesome. So with that, I'd like to congratulate Chaz on a two-hour PR at the World's M 100K um, and also wish him luck uh, in Eastern States. Of course, Chaz and I will be talking <laughs> much more between now and Eastern States, but uh, just a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Chaz, and uh, congrats once again on uh, two of the three legs of the Triple Crown. So other news. Um, the uh, West Henderson High School went to the Music City Carnival a track race, kind of a postseason, if you will, prior to the national championships. Um, Our team is going to go to the Adidas National Championships in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, We had some great performances. Uh, Of course, if you saw social media, I'd like to congratulate my two kids. Um, Amber ran a 234, a huge PR, uh, a four-second PR, and a school record. She got her middle school school record, so so happy for her. Uh, tremendous race on her part. It was fun to watch. And then uh, my son, Keegan, ran soon thereafter and broke our high school school record, running 157. That record has stood since 2008. So um, we want to just congratulate my two kids. We had some other great PRs as well. Um, 
looking forward to seeing these kids compete uh june 15th 16th and 17th i think is the dates uh excuse me 14th 15th and 16th of june in greensboro north carolina so um you know, my my well wishes to to all of those kids that are competing. Um, I, I know there's a few listeners that have kids that are competing at that level, so uh, good luck to all of them. And other news: um, continue to train for um, High Lonesome and uh, gear up for that. I'm excited. We'll be heading out for Colorado July one to try to get acclimated. Uh, training has been going pretty darn well. Um, getting in a lot of treadmill hiking. Uh, the other day, uh, I did an hour and a half on the treadmill, got in, um, 5,500 feet, uh, excuse me, 5,000 feet in about five and a half miles. Uh, so really working on the incline hiking. Um, also just trying to get out and get distance under my feet. So Sunday, uh, I was going to meet, uh, my daughter and, and her middle school friends for a, a group run, um, I didn't have time before I went out to see just how far I'd be running because it was going to be a point to point running from my house to um, uh, the basically the uh, trailhead of the Art Lobe at the Davidson River. And uh, it ended up taking me about 25 miles. Uh, if you saw Strava, 24.99 <laughs> in just over five miles. But it was pretty cool because I ran the road to the trails and then it was all trails all the way uh, to the parking lot. Uh, so super cool run. Really enjoyed it. Really had fun. Uh, got soaking wet. It, it, it downpoured. <laughs> so just a great run. Um, really fun to test out my gear, test out my, my nutrition. Um, yeah, I've been working with, uh, the dietitian. I actually have another meeting with her today, so I'll, I'll keep you guys updated as, as that evolves. Um, I've only had my initial contact with her and we kind of talked about that and my goals. Um, but her name is Kendra Miller. If you're interested in her contact, I'll put it in the show notes. I have it. I've had, had a few of you reach out about that. So I will try to remember to put her contact in the show notes, but, um, you know, her biggest things, um, I've been implementing, making sure that I have breakfast, especially, um, prior to my run, if I'm going to run early, um, and then something right after, you know, right after I run also make sure I, I'm kind of making sure that I'm not overdoing it on snacking and extra calories. Um, so really trying to implement what she's, um, you know, what she's telling me. So working on it, um, always a work in progress. Uh, traveling was, was difficult, honestly. Um, I think we all find that, that, uh, you know, when you travel, uh, your diet tends to be disrupted, um, as mine was, um, really enjoyed my time in Murfreesboro. We were in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is not far out of Nashville, um, ran at a really cool, um, national, um, park service. Um, it was a, a historic battlefield called Stones River. Really enjoyed the the run there. Um, really cool to, to kind of run through those um, those battlefields. Um, so had a good time there. Uh, good run. Uh, and then Sunday, like I said, it was a long run. Uh, Monday was the treadmill hike, hour and a half treadmill hike, and Tuesday which I'm recording this on Wednesday. Tuesday was an awesome uh, 20 mile run. Um, if those of you that um, have been running a while in the Western North Carolina area, I put on a race formerly called the Rooster's Revenge. It was a 30 K uh, in the Mills River wreck area. Um, and uh, so I did a, a tribute to that course and ran that course um, yesterday morning, Tuesday morning. Um, really enjoyed the run. Uh, it's 10 river crossings right at the beginning. Uh, it's, you know, not a lot of vert, which was fine. I just kind of wanted time on feet, um, added on a little bit, kind of did a little extra loop to, to tack on 20 miles. So I got a 20 mile run, um, two days after the 25. So good back to back kind of effort. Um, really feeling good about my running. Um, it's not fast as fast as I'd like it to be, uh, which, you know, I'm going to continue to work on as I approach, um, not only, um, high lonesome, but as I approach, uh, the JFK 50 miler in the fall, that's November. So I'm going to start to work more on my turnover and get my pace back. Um, you know, like I said, just, uh, just not where I want to be, uh, due to a number of factors. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that right now. I'm just going to continue to work so I can finish high lonesome and, uh, and look forward to the fall and try to get some speed back. Um, 
fun to watch the Masters Mile at the track meet. <laughs> it kind of motivated me to kind of get this turnover going again. Um, watching those 40 plus year olds run the mile uh, and try to break five minutes, it was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, it, you know, I've, I've got some some inspiration <laughs> and some work to do for sure. But uh, but super excited uh, for the future and what it may hold. Um, and uh, just continuing to enjoy that new pack, um, the the Solomon S Lab um, 10. It's uh, it's been working really well. I love how breathable and lightweight it is. Um, you know, as I was worried about the pockets being a little loose, but um, on the runs, honestly, I've had no problems with stuff falling out. So um, I've learned, you know, where to store certain things, especially heavier things, using the zippered pouches. So um, it is. It's great, great pack. Um, enjoying it thus far. So continue to work with that. Continue to work with my nutrition um, in run. I've kind of um, I sat down with my wife on Sunday prior to the run, and just looked through what I do have, and kind of took inventory of what I do have, what I like, what I don't like, uh, what carbohydrates are involved in what I do have, and you know what will help meet my needs, and where I was you know, uh, deficient, where I needed to uh, to fill in some gaps, uh, which falls in the source of more the. Um, uh, solid, if you will, solid fueling. So, um, so Sunday I went out with, um, some scratch chews, which I really enjoy. And, um, and the cliff Z bars just to kind of give my palate a break as well as using uh, tailwind. Um, you know, tailwind has always been a tried and true for me. It's, it's, you know, as anything, it, it hasn't always worked, but, um, you know, I would say a good eight, nine times out of 10, it's been successful for me. So I've gone back to tailwind, um, using that as my primary liquid fueling source, um, with electrolytes and calories and carbohydrates. So, um, working on it as it's always a work in progress. Um, and, and, you know, of course people have reached out, I've used this and that. And so I'm going to go on the feed, hop on, try a few of the things you guys have suggested. Um, really appreciate those suggestions, by the way. Thank you for, for comp, you know, commenting. Uh, that's what I love about this podcast is such a great community. Uh, we try to share what's worked for us and what we like and what we don't like. Um, my friend Jeremy gave me some knack, uh, and I really enjoyed that. So I probably pick up some, some knack stuff. They have a puree, um, that, you know, it's, it's got a lot of good stuff on it. It's all natural, which is kind of cool. Um, they've got a gel, which was, um, salted maple syrup, I believe it was called. That was pretty good. Um, another 200 calorie stash. Uh, I got to double check what the carbohydrates were on it, but, um, definitely going to order some of the knack. Uh, appreciate that, Jeremy. It was really good stuff. So, um, yeah, continue to experiment and that's, you know, that's the name of the game, trying to find what works, what doesn't work, sort through that so that when race day comes, we're comfortable with the plan. Um, the participant guide came out, so that's wonderful. Um, I'm going to be sharing that with my, my crew and pacers, um, still sorting through all that as well, seeing who can come and who can't, um, uh, making sure we're, we're covered, um, covering all the bases. So, um, yeah, so I, I guess that's, you know, kind of everything right now. Um, coaching is really busy. A lot of people reaching out, which is fantastic. Um, I did a giveaway for the URE 100 miler and, uh, congrats to Corey Denny. He won the, uh, the package for free coaching for six months. So, um, looking forward to working with Corey. Uh, very cool. Um, and you know, had, like I said, number of new athletes reaching out. Um, a few of them asked, you know, are you comfortable with coaching marathoning? And uh, I, I really am. Um, you know, that's my roots, uh, the, the track and the road is where I come from. It's what I, you know, I kind of started coaching with, um, I had a, about eight athletes in the Boston marathon this year. So, um, yes, the marathoning is, is totally, I know I talk a lot about ultra obviously because it's most relevant to what I do, but yeah, I do coach the lower distances and really enjoy doing that as well. So if you're interested in anything, you know, let's have a conversation. Um, as, uh, I'll see what, um, capacity looks like after I find out, you know, if some of these new athletes are coming on board or not. Um, but stay tuned. You can always reach out and we can talk and, and I can see where I'm at at that moment. So happy to have that conversation. Um, all of my contacts are in the show notes. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, things you want to talk about, things you want to hear about, uh, folks you want to hear from, just let me know. Happy to have those conversations as well. Cause you guys make this podcast what it is. And I appreciate Appreciate that. Also, want to thank my Patreon supporters. They continue to to support financially, which uh, obviously keeps me going, keeps me motivated, keeps me rolling. 
uh, keeps this podcast coming out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring on people that you guys can hear from, learn from, um, and just get, gain some really good information and knowledge. So um, I hope to continue to do that. And, and thanks to my Patreon supporters, it's making it feasible and possible. So thank you to all of them. Uh, that's it for this episode. I hope that you are doing well. I hope your training goes well and that you're enjoying the beginning of the summer. And uh, until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Running, running is life. <laughs>